Hey there, everybody. In this video, we are going to do a couple of examples together where we have to use Kirchhoff's rules to analyze what's happening inside of an electric circuit. So I've got a simple circuit that's got two resistors, one there and one there, which are connected to a battery. So here's our battery. And we know a few things about the circuit. We want to figure out what the rest of the things are. So for example, I know that the current through this resistor is 4 amperes. And I'm actually going to draw that on the circuit, kind of sort of like that. Remember that charges flow from positive to negative on our battery, so that tells me the direction of the current. So the first one of Kirchhoff's rules that we learned about is the junction rule. And that says the current entering a junction has to equal the current leaving the junction. So if you kind of look at those two resistors, there's no junctions anywhere in between them. So all the current that goes through the first resistor must also go through the second resistor. So I know from Kirchhoff's junction rule that the current through the second resistor has to be 4 amperes. There's nowhere else for it to go. Now if there was another wire branching off from there, then the current wouldn't be 4 amps, it would be 4 amps minus whatever current went through the second wire. But since there's not a second wire there, I know that the current will be the same. You might say that those two resistors are in series. If they're in series, they have the same current. The second rule is the loop rule, which says the net voltage change around a closed loop has to be equal to zero. So I'm going to draw a loop around my circuit that looks like this. That would be a closed loop. And then the loop rule says that the net voltage change, or the voltage of the battery, minus the voltage across resistor 1, which is 12 volts right here, minus the voltage across resistor 2, which is 2 volts right there, has to equal 0. So the charges gain energy as they come from the battery. So like if we were to draw an LOL chart, charges start out with a bunch of energy. And then they lose a little bit of energy to heat each time they go through a resistor. And so by the time they go through the last resistor, all of their electric potential energy has been converted to heat. So then when we return to the battery, they don't have any energy left over. So the net voltage change has to be equal to zero. So if you do some simple subtraction there, you can see that the voltage across our battery would be 14 volts. So I'm going to write that up here. So remember, a volt is a joule per coulomb, and so what that means is that a coulomb of charge exiting the battery, each coulomb would have 14 volts of energy, or excuse me, 14 joules of energy. After going through the first resistor, they would have lost 12 joules of energy, meaning they only have 2 joules of energy remaining, and so they would lose 2 more joules of energy going through the second resistor, and so their energy will be back to zero. So again, the, net I the big idea here is that around the loop, the net voltage has to equal zero. So the last thing I have left to find are the missing resistances. So I can use Ohm's law, and I can solve for R. So that would be delta V over I. And so R1 the voltage is 12 volts and the current is 4 amperes. So that tells me that R1 is 3. Remember our unit for resistance is ohms. So I'm just going to write 3 ohms right there. And if you do the same thing for R2, just plugging in a different 
delta V. So 2 volts over 4 amps. So that tells you that R2 is half an ohm. So I'll say 0 0.5 right there. And so using Kirchhoff's rules and using Ohm's law, we can find everything that we want to know about the circuit. So our second example is a little bit more complicated. In this particular example, we've got three resistors. So one, two, and three. And so our um, problem is going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, now there's a couple different ways you can approach this um, circuit. Where I would start with, since I know that I have the voltage and resistance of the first resistor, I can go ahead and use Ohm's law to solve for the current. So like I can say I1 is delta V over delta R, so that would be 20 volts over 2 ohms. And so the current through the first resistor would be 10 amperes. And again, notice the way the battery is oriented. Long side's positive, short side's negative. And so we might draw the current going through this resistor kind of like that. And that would be a current of 10 amps. So 10 amperes. The second thing that I notice is that I know what the current through resistor 2 is. I know that it is 4 amperes. So I'm just going to draw this right there. And that's going to allow me to find the current through the third one. So I'm going to just call that I3 for right now. So I know that all those currents are related via the junction rule. I know that the current entering the junction which is 10 amperes, has to equal the current leaving the junction, which would be 4 amps plus whatever I3 is. And so again, we can do some simple subtraction, and we can get that I3 equals 6 amps. So the junction that we're referring to is like right here. And so the current that goes into that junction has to equal the current leaving that junction. So now that I know what this current is, I'm going to go ahead and add that on my diagram. That's 6 amperes, so I don't forget about it. So I've got all my currents figured out. The next thing I might do is figure out what the voltage is. Again, for R2, I've got the current and I've got the resistance, so I can use my Ohm's law equation and I can solve for the voltage. In other words, delta V2 would be I2 times R2. And so my current is 4 amps. The resistance is 5 ohms. And so just multiplying would give me something like 20 volts. So over here I could write that the voltage is 20 volts. If you want to go ahead and make it negative, you can. The thing that we have to remember is that charges lose energy going through a resistor. It goes to heat. So I don't care if you write it as negative 20 volts or not, just understand charges lose energy moving through a resistor. So now that I got that voltage figured out, if I wanted to, I could figure out what the voltage of my battery is. The reason that I can do that now is because I have a complete loop. Get a different color real quick. So the loop that I'm going to make goes from the battery through the first resistor, through the second resistor, and then back to the battery. So since that's a closed loop, I know the voltage around it has to be equal to zero. So I can say that the voltage of my battery minus 20 volts, because that's the voltage of number 1, minus 20 more volts, that's the voltage of number 2, 
has to be equal to zero. And so solving that for delta VB, I can say that the voltage of my battery is 40 volts. So I'm just going to write that up here, 40 volts. So notice we don't care what the voltage across number 3 is. We're going to find it here in just a second. Uh, I can use Kirchhoff's rules with any closed loop or any junction. So since V1 and V2 compromise a closed loop with the battery, I can use that to find the voltage of the battery. Um, I can use a different loop. Let me get a bigger eraser here. Okay, got that erased. So I can use a different closed loop to find the voltage across R3. So this time I'm going to make my loop look like this. So it's another closed loop, still includes the battery, and I can use that closed loop to figure out the voltage across V3. So I can write something like 40 volts, that's the voltage of the battery, minus 20 volts, again that's this voltage right here, minus delta V3 has to add up to zero. And so you can do some arithmetic and you would get a voltage of 20 volts. And again I don't care if you write it as positive or negative, just understand charges lose energy moving through a resistor like that. Okay, so now I've got my voltage across number three. Notice that it is the same as the voltage across number two. So they both came out to be 20 volts. That's going to be true if you only have two resistors that are directly parallel to each other like that. We call that, that a kind of circuit a parallel circuit. But if there had been another uh, resistor, for instance, like right here, then those voltages would not be the same. But around a closed loop, your voltage still has to add up to zero. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is to figure out R3. And so I'm just going to use Ohm's law again 20 volts. Our current was 6 amperes, which means that our resistance is like 3 and a third ohms. Kind of like that. Okay, so the key thing when analyzing circuits, because there's a lot of different things we may be asked to find, is just start with the things that are easy for you to find. Like, for instance, the currents were easy to find since we knew two of the currents to begin with, that guy and that guy, it was real easy to find a third. And then it was easy to find the voltage of the battery because we had the voltage across one closed loop, which then allowed us to find the voltage around the other closed loop. So the key to these things is just using what you know. We know three things, the loop rule, the junction rule, and Ohm's law and then just kind of applying it step by step until you get to the thing that you're being asked to find. So now you should be in a position to tackle the um, homework assignment that goes with this. So be sure to do that and upload pictures to the classroom so that I can see what you're doing. Till next time, ta-ta.